Hi, everyone. Welcome to True Disabled Story. My name is Nico, and I use he, him pronouns. I'm a white man with parted blonde hair, large blue and brown spectacles, and a orange, white, and blue checkered button-up shirt. I'm seated against a blurred-out background. Uh, this is my work office. Like about 25% of Americans and the full 17% of Philadelphians, I'm disabled. Whether we look locally, nationally, or even globally, disabled communities are full of dynamic, diverse, and frankly delightful people with their own stories to tell. All we have to do is listen. As many of you know, I was born disabled. I've never known differently. So when I come into contact with other disabled folks, whether personally or in my civic or professional life, I'm really interested in their stories um, and the, I guess the path they've taken up to this point. Today, I'm really honored and excited to be joined uh, by Brianna, and I can't wait to hear what they have to share. Let's get started. Hi, Brianna. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Of course. So tell us your, your diagnosis story. Was this something maybe you were actively pursuing or, or was it like a surprise? What was your path to diagnosis like? Um. So... <laughs> I've been a double amputee since birth, so it's more so just the way of life. Something you know, something that just I've had to learn how to get adjusted to and just become accustomed to. That makes a lot of sense. So you've been a double amputee since birth. Uh, what impact has that diagnosis had throughout your life? I mean, I think there, you know, for the most part, um, while I think since it's been from birth, I've been able to pretty much wing it and try to do, you know, do everything I can. Um, but I do feel that, you know, being a bilateral amputee, wearing prosthetics, as well as also being um, in a wheelchair, the two create many obstacles um, from time to time. I mean, walking long distances to places just not being accessible. Um, and then me being left out of many things that I would want to do that, unfortunately, is just the world is not fully accessible to what I need to what I would like to do. Um, so, I, I mean, I think the impact, it's been it's been good and bad. Um, I think more so as I've gotten older and become an adult, or there are many, many obstacles that I'm trying like facing daily. And I'm, I'm realizing it now, more so now, because as an adult, I want to. I want to be like ever, you know, I want to do what everybody else is doing, maybe with modification, but just be able to attempt to do it. Um, and I, you know, I do find that I, there are some bumps in the road that I do hit. There are, and I'm sorry about that. But thank you for your answer. You give a really good sense of how you manage the condition uh, and also what challenges that you still face. So. You've been a double amputee since birth, and obviously you are not that age anymore. Looking back, what advice would you give either like a younger version of yourself to more ably deal with with uh, this condition? Or what would advice would you give other people, maybe younger people, with your diagnosis? I mean, I, th I think anyone with a limb loss, I would just say, you know, don't limit yourself and don't have limitations and don't let people tell you that you have limitations. Um, you know, a lot of what I've been successful with and what I've been successful with, what I've been able to do, I just kind of like, I went with it. I said, let me just try it. If I fail, I fail. If it doesn't work out, if it does, great, then I know I can do it. But I wouldn't have known what I can and can't do unless I attempt to do it. Um, so I would definitely just say, you know, go for it. <laughs> Whatever it is, you just go for it. Not everything in life is going to work out, whether you have disability or not. Nothing's going to be perfect. The, nothing's going to work out perfectly. Um, and I think it's just all about just taking that leap of faith, you know, faith and just going with it. I love that. That's a sentiment that I hear over and over again. Uh, and one that I really do agree with, you know, the language that you use around a disability doesn't always help determine, but has a huge influence on how successful that disabled life is going to be. Uh, so I definitely see you there. All right, Brianna, you've been very succinct, and I appreciate that. 
this is a chance for us to get to know more about you. I leave my fourth question kind of open. Uh, it just says, where can people find you online or share one recent win about your life? So you've had lots of successes. I'd love to hear about them. If you want to build a community online, you have like a podcast or a show or something, uh, where can people find you online? But just in general, step up on that soapbox, brag about yourself, uh, bring your pom-poms, be your own cheerleader. Let's hear it. Um, so I will say I'm a big advocate when it comes to accessibility, um, my local, I live in New York and my local um, bus company, I fought with them for a couple of years um, with making sure that, you know, the buses are accessible and everyone's able to get on the bus. Um, so, you know, there were um, some challenges and some some fights that I had to do, but I was able to, to successfully um, have them revamp their whole training when it comes to like ADA passengers and now there's a whole new protocol that they have to follow um, and ensuring that people with any kind of disability, whether physical, um, is able to board the bus safely and in a manner like, like everybody else without being left. Um, so that's a, a big win for me. Um, and I, I mean, I also have to say I am currently pregnant now. So this is another big win, but scary moment in life um, of just navigating pregnancy while disabled. Um, so, I mean, I do have Instagram, so you can follow me at Brianna Copes. So it's B-R-Y-A-N-N-A-C-O-P-E-S on Instagram. And I, all things just life and just being real. And I think we need more, um, individuals with disabilities that are just authentic, um, and just showing the good, the bad, not everything day to day works out. I, I always run into an issue. And I think it's just, it's good for for people to be aware of that, to know that not everything is just this, it can be this rainbow and butterfly, or there has to be a certain way of doing things. And if not, I wing it every day. <laughs> I love that. Brianna, thank you so much for sharing a bit of your time with me and for talking about where you've been in life and more importantly, where you're going. That is a huge win to advocate for more accessibility with your, your bus system, your transit system. Uh, and I love to hear that you've made positive progress in that direction. We need that here in Philadelphia too. Yeah. All right, Brianna, thank you again. No matter where you go, I'm rooting for you. And I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.